Last episode, I was finally able to gather the resources required to prove to Reese that I did in fact have the heart of the mountain. This finally allows me to progress from the Deep Caverns, aka Super Weenie Hut Jr., to the Dwarven Mines, which is just regular Weenie Hut Jr. Okay, so final thing before I go into the Dwarven Mines tomorrow. I got myself a pick of Nimbus. That pickaxe is one of the few items in the game that actually does break. However, 5,000 uses is more than enough, more than enough to get me very far. And I, it's not like I didn't have the money. I got this for 150k, and I'm certain that this is going to make me more than 150k worth of stuff, so. Before we get into the meat of the video, I'd just like to ask, please consider subscribing. If you want to see more of me bumbling my way through Skyblock without knowing what I'm doing, this will likely be a series that runs for a very long time. You know that whole intro about the Dwarven Mines? Actually, scratch that. I got distracted and decided to mess around in the end for, like, an entire day. Oops. I think I'm supposed to look for nodes. Ender nodes are end stone or obsidian with glowing purple particles coming off of them. Like the one shown on screen. They'll be very important later. Uh, also I'm supposed to kill Enderman. I don't know if this is a good idea. I'ma try it. Oh, I'm chilling. I can one of these guys easy. Never mind. With the reliable recovery of the Wand of Healing that I got last episode, I could finally venture deeper into the end. Shortly into my expedition, I found my first end node, which, unfortunately for me, was an Endermite Nest. I can... start end stone collection. That's probably... oh, what the... Whoa, I'm getting cooked. What the heck? Oh, skyblock level. Nice. Uh, hmm. Maybe if I have a chance of summoning a horde of vendor mites when just mining the floor here. What is that? That's epic rarity, so I probably just dropped like a 0.1 chance or some crazy stuff. After being mildly traumatized by a bunch of bugs jumping me while I had a 50k coin wallet, I decided to make a tactical retreat and come back with more gear. After a lot of more minion foraging fishing nonsense that really didn't lead anywhere, I've decided I'm gonna go back into the end. I'm buying a Voidwalker Katana. It's hopefully gonna help me just murder Enderman. So, here we go. Hopefully it's worth the 90k. Wielding a weapon specialized in specifically end mobs, I returned to the end for the third time, and the third time was in fact the charm. Would you look at that, I come back and as soon as I do, Grand experience bottle. What? There are like seven of them now. What the hell? Now that I'm actually finding them, I should probably go into a little more detail about end nodes. There are two different types, the end stone type and the obsidian type, and they both have very slightly different loot pools. But both of them can contain some very valuable items. Okay, and here's the... where I'm punished. I gotta go. Where'd the Endermites go? Oh, I died. I think that might be the first time I've died in combat. Huh. Well, I get loot here anyway. Never punished. Unfortunately, each node I opened came with around a 30% chance of being an Endermite nest. Like that. Bro, these Endermite jump scares. Stop. 
The rewards, however, still far outweighed the risks of Endermite nests. Uh, these Grand Experience bottles are actually so nice because I need to, well, fully enchant the sword that I just bought. Using those Grand XP bottles, I really quickly enchanted the Voidwalker Katana and tested it out before be going back to farming end nodes. That was almost a three shot. Or I think that was a three shot, and I think it was almost a two shot if I got two crits. About 15 or 20 Endermite nests later, I finally got a really interesting drop. Uh, shrimp the fish? I'm pretty sure that is, like, super rare. If I had a nickel for every useless fish item that I dropped in the first two days of Skyblock that has a sub 0.5% chance, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it is really weird that it happened twice. Reinvigorated by that comedically rare yet useless drop, I decided to keep going at the end node farming for a bit. And when I returned to the hub, I was very surprised by the results. Okay, so I just like went into the end for a little bit to just, you know, see how much stuff I could get in a pretty limited amount of time. Apparently the answer is a lot. I have 1.5 million coins already worth of stuff. What the... It's... Those Titanic experience bottles are crazy expensive. Good god. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we have a money-making method. Future Claw here. I never really explained how end node farming works, so I thought I'd do it now. This is with a bit higher level gear than in this video, but the principle is still the same. It's mostly just spamming Rogue Sword's ability to increase your speed and running around and mining as many end nodes as possible in the end. There are a couple catches to this method. One is that if you don't have a good way to deal with the Undermites, you don't get Might Gel, and that's one of the more profitable things out of the loot pool. And another is that the end nodes are a per server basis, so other people can steal them if there are a lot of people trying to do it in one lobby. Another thing that may turn a few people off is that it's not as brain dead as just holding down a couple buttons like farming or sand collecting can be. But personally, I actually hate how brain dead those alternatives are, and I much prefer the slight challenge of the end node farming. In just 10 minutes of testing this farming method, I made almost 600,000 coins, and that's without dropping a single Titanic experience bottle, which would have almost doubled the profits immediately. Doing the math really quick, if you can make 600,000 coins every 10 minutes, that means you can make around 3.6 million coins per hour, and that's without dropping a single Titanic experience bottle. Assuming you drop 2 per hour, you're over 5 million already. While making reliable money is cool and all, you can't have a video about the end without at least experiencing the dragons a little bit. Even if it is a terrible idea. Alright, I found some people running some dragons, and I felt like it would be a shame not to record myself getting probably just absolutely obliterated by Ender Dragon, so. <laughs> Here we go! Did it even go? Oh, I almost just died. I did just die. Uh, yeah. I think I got some hits on it, so I might loot share for an amount. Holy. Yeah, it went about as well as you'd expect. Hi, right, editing claw here. I did a lot more off-screen and known grinding, as well as doing a few more dragon fights. Including even experiencing the very rare superior dragon. Unfortunately, the videos all got corrupted because my PC ran out of storage. It was also around this time that I decided to stop being stubborn and look up an actual guide, and it turns out the Raider Axe was not supposed to be my first priority. It was actually supposed to be the Void Sword sold by the Lone Adventurer. Okay, so I've been doing a bit more off-screen and grinding, and wow, just Titanic XP bottles are just so profitable. I think this is how I'm going to be making my early game money until I get, like, enough gear to be effective in the Dwarven Mines. Also, I do need to kill a 
bunch of Endermen for armor eventually. But I'm not stressing on that yet. It does feel really weird being able to 1v1 something with 9,000 health, though. Is it kind of because I'm using a sword that specializes in exactly killing Endermen and nothing else? Yeah, but I paid for my very circumstantially broken sword, and I'm going to use it. Speaking of paying for swords, I need to actually, like, buy the sword from this guy and start the quest. I brought money to do that and then forgot. So I'll just be... Buying this. 125. Is that just better than the Raider Axe? Straight up. Huh. Well, now I should probably... Get the pieces of Ender Armor. After finally becoming competent enough to survive in the end, discovering a decent way to make money in the early game, and getting obliterated by a few different dragons, I finally had a pointer on where to go next. And in next episode, I'll be... And in next episode, I'll be following that lead and getting that Ender Armor.